How was the concert to, tonight? Uh, for me, it was loads of fun, you know, to, to play in this kind of environment and to, to have the, the kids all so excited and, uh, you know, it's risky, you know, I never heard the music. I heard it once and looked at the score once and we just rehearsed and they pointed at me when I'm supposed to play and said don't when I'm not and it was just wonderful to be able to do that. One rehearsal. Yeah, one rehearsal this afternoon, kind of a run through and uh, it's really uh, so well organized and graphed out that, um, you know, and, and the parts that were played covered everything. So I was just sort of like uh, frosting on the cake, you know, not the real cake. Yeah. So they've been working for weeks and they did all the hard parts and I just had, <laughs> you know, got to have fun with it. So. Do you often play with amateur musicians? Uh, sometimes, um, you know, universities and high schools and different percussive uh, events that uh, I play at uh, as a solo artist. They'll usually be, you know, uh, something like this where you can uh, join in. But uh, nothing like this on mm -hmm. this scale. It was really fun, um, you know, to have so many groups and the, the uh, antiphony of it all. You know, this one speaks and then this one, and you know, and then all together. And, and then being in this uh, kind of industrial surrounding, mm -hmm. you know, is great because so many of the sounds I use are inspired by industry. You know, the chinas and the steam engines or, you know, the white noise and, you know, thunder and rattling and clanging and all that stuff appeals to me so and we hear the train yeah. in the background for a little added atmosphere and yeah and I took pictures of all the you know the locomotives and some equipment and stuff you know so it was fun for me it's fun to play with amateurs yeah it's fun to play with anybody you know and I mean it doesn't matter um, you know there's only two kinds of music good music and bad music <laughs> and either could happen with amateurs or professionals it really doesn't matter it's just there's a common language amongst drummers we understand and uh, we relate to each other this way in rhythm and uh, you know rhythms universal it's uh, the universe happens in time you know we breathe at a certain tempo our heart beats at a tempo we perceive pitch uh, is ju uh, as vibration you know so many beats per second, um, color is the same thing, reflected light at a certain frequency, our DNA, everything is all happening in time and, and pulsing and vibrating. So it's all, uh, you know, a, a metaphor for what's going on yeah. in, in the temporal universe that we live in. So, so we relate and, and we're sort of the underdogs of, uh, of the music world. So, you know, we support each other. And I, I found Underdog? Yeah, well, you know, the drummer's always in the back, never gets his picture on the cover of Rolling Stone. Very important. Oh, it doesn't really matter anymore, but probably when you're young and your motives aren't so pure, you know, you'd like to do this uh, as well as the fun of it, but also to be rich and famous, so, yeah. you know, <laughs> when somebody else gets all the glory, you know. So we feel um, a camaraderie I think no other yeah. instrumentalists feel and uh, have no problem playing with each other. Whereas if you put two great guitarists together, they might have a battle or something or yeah. hide their licks from each other rather than share and communicate, so. Yeah. yeah. About your instrument, you're playing a very special drum kit. <laughs> you know, I try to stay away from the circus aspect of it because it is really huge. And, uh, but I don't want that to get in the way of uh, the music. You know, that, that it's just what I need to make music on. Mm -hmm. And uh, the trap drum set's a, a new instrument, you know, less than 100 years old, really formally. And um, still not really taught in universities, not considered a, a legitimate instrument. So, uh, you know, I'm, my job, I think, is to try and make music, if I can, all by myself on the drum set, using melody and harmony to, to give people an experience that... That's the reason why it's so big. Yeah. yeah, if you're playing with melody, uh, you need notes. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's not just a symbol for the sound and to play rhythms on one sound. It's uh, uh, eight symbols to play melodies on or a chromatic here and diatonic here to play melody on. You're working uh, on new materials at right now? Yeah, always, you know, always chipping away one way or the other. It, it, the creative process comes however it wants to. So sometimes I'm writing, sometimes I'm drawing, sometimes I'm working on the kit and looking at the sculptural aspects of it or trying to invent or fix something that frustrates me that could be better mm -hmm. uh, or adding something or trying to figure out a better way to set something up so it's easier to play or more unified or organized in a better way. And then um, 
you know, you write music sometimes, you work in different media, you know, like electronically you can write and mm -hmm. Uh, or, or you can write for real instruments. So, you know, recently I'm playing with the uh, Metropole Orchestra, and um, at home in Austin I just put a group together with a string quartet that's uh, named Tosca that's been touring with David Byrne and uh, two other musician composers, a bassist and a keyboardist. And, you know, it's just been great. So, uh, you know, I work in all different ways. I play with rock bands or, you know... You have uh, co-writers. No, I oh. basically... <coughs> You know, write my own music, unless uh, I mean, if I'm working with Jeff Beck and he writes something, or he has somebody else write something, I'm I'm happy to do that too. It depends on the circumstances, uh, you know. Uh, but for the most part, for the last 15 years, I've just done my own thing, whether it be with another ensemble or uh, or or not. You know, I, I write my own music yeah. and and perform my own music and get people who are interested in playing it uh, yeah. to play it. And when did you start uh, playing drums? Uh, when I was probably before 13, I remember, you know, the typical uh, whatever you have to hit, <laughs> you hit. And, uh, you know, you get a little more sophisticated with that. And and then um, what happened to me was uh, Ed Sullivan's show was on and the Beatles were on. And I said, Dad, please yeah. let me have drum lessons and get a drum set. So, you know, I was able to do that. And uh, okay. that's when it started. And you have uh, had lessons on the School of Music? Yeah, I had lessons privately for about a year and then uh, and learned the basics and uh, had some good teachers. And then I just played rock and roll and fun bands, you know, f with friends uh, throughout high school. And then uh, my last year of high school, I started to get serious and go into the music program in the school, study with a better private teacher and uh, major in music in college for two and a half years and then sort of turned professional. I, t I took a year off to practice and during that time, you know, uh, just never had the opportunity to go back to school, so I, I taught myself more about composition and uh, orchestration and things like that, and listening to Stravinsky and analyzing the scores and going, I like the way he's doing this, what's going on there? And you go, oh, okay. And then you emulate, you know, and until you can find your own voice. Yeah. And that's what I've done ever since the beginning. Yeah. And do you have your own style? I think so. I've worked uh, towards it. I mean, I, I, you know, I can... I look at music in its basic elements, so I'm just playing with these elements that anybody can play with, but how we put them together yeah. is, uh, you know, filtered through our experience, what we like, what we desire, what we fear, and uh, so no two people will put the same elements together the mm -hmm. same way. Mm -hmm. And um, I never had an original idea till I was 30 years old, you know, mm -hmm. but um, around that time I started to go, okay, you know, I'm going to do this and do something different. and people started to tell me that, oh, you know, I heard this track and, you know, I heard some of your Bozio trademarks. I said, what? And they said, well, you know, when you do this on the Chinas or something, and I said, oh, okay, Bozio trademark. And write that down and try to build on those things and, and do less of the things that are identified with my other heroes, like Tony Williams mm -hmm. or Billy Cobham. And, um, and then little by little, you find yourself uh, having a developed style. So, yeah. Last question. Can you speak into the camera and uh, tell all the boys and the girls from the factorium what they should do to be to become uh, as good as you are? Oh my God. <laughs> boys and girls of the factorium. I'm not that good to begin <laughs> with. And uh, what you should do is to just follow your heart. You know, we have the basics which are there and we should learn how to read music and learn the techniques and different styles, emulate different styles, and then after a while you start to go, okay, I'm not going to copy this guy or that guy, and you start to develop your own thing. So follow your heart, and if your heart tells you to play other people's music, that's good. If your heart tells you to create your own music, that's good. So whatever you want to do, you know, music is a humanity, and it's a reflection of what's inside. So if you follow what, you, what delights you inside, nine times out of ten, other people will be delighted by it as well. So... I hope that helps. About Frank Zappa, I, no one would know who I am if it wasn't for Frank Zappa, and uh, he taught me more than I probably ever learned from any one person in my life. So I owe pretty much everything to him. And um, everybody knows, you know, that that's how I feel about him. And I consider myself very lucky to have uh, just auditioned and somehow got that job.